Hello, my name is Skylar Smith and I do technical sales and support here at Apogee Instruments. And today we're going to talk about choosing the right infrared radiometer for you, uh, going through all the options of infrared radiometers that Apogee Instruments has to offer. So, we're going to cover all the field of view options. We're going to cover the difference between the SI100, SI400, and SIF series. And then we're going to go through a demonstration of using our field of view calculators that we have available as an app and on the spreadsheet. So first thing, the SI100 and SIF100 series are both analog, so that means that they both require two channels in order to read them, a differential channel to read the millivolt output from the thermopile, and then a single-ended channel in order to read the sensor body temperature, which is the thermistor. And so those thermistors are usually measured with half-bridge measurements. And so the difference between the SI100 and SIF100 is that the SIF100 is a fast response, has a 0.2 second response time, whereas the SI100 has a 0.6 second response. And then you can see how that affects the signal size, it being a much smaller signal between 5 and 15 microvolts per degree C on the SIF series, whereas the SI100 is between 20 and 60 microvolts per degree C. So the SI100 is ideal for static stations on traditional data loggers. Your SIF100 series is ideal if you're on a moving platform of some sort doing measurements connected to data loggers that have that high resolution that can read that small signal. The SI400 series is all completely digital using the SDI12 protocol. So that's ideal for your static stations that require multiple sensors uh, with a logger that can read that digital SDI-12. Then in each one of those we have the different field of view options. For the SI-100 and the SI-400 series we have four field of view options from our narrowest 14 degree half angle field of view uh, up to our horizontal field of view. And then we report that in half angles and if you want more information you can click there on that website. Unfortunately due to the small signal size we only have three of those field of view options available. So we've put together this table to kind of explain a little bit better, but for the largest field of view, the 22 degree field of view, we have the SI111, SI411, SIF111, and MI210. Uh, the MI referring to the infrared radiometer connected to the handheld meter that gives you that temperature. So you can look there to find your corresponding field of view for which model it corresponds with. And this is a, a great illustration showing that same concept. So the SI111 is equal to the 22 degree field of view. And you can see in this particular application where you're doing crop canopy, the SI111 may not be ideal because it's seeing much more than just the crop. It's seeing the trees and the mountains in the, behind it. Whereas the horizontal uh, is seeing the most amount of the crop and just the crop without anything behind it. And we'll go through this next on the field of view calculator demonstration. So the field of view calculator is available uh, as an app. Just search for Apogee Instruments in your app store and you'll be able to find that and a few other things we have to offer. And then it's also available on our website. And there's the link right there. You can click on that and we'll just go to the website right now and go through that. So just come here to apogeeinstruments.com. So here we are on the web page, on the home page. We'll come over here to support. We will click there. And then on the far side over here is infrared radiometers. So we'll click here. Now there is a lot of information on this page, uh, a lot of the frequently asked questions. So if you have questions yourself, if this is going to fit for your application, I would come look through here and then a lot of helpful articles and links um, on trying to get that to work for you. Uh, the first one there being field of view explain. I mentioned that uh, on an earlier slide, uh, but that is the link that you want to look through if you want to get more information on that. We're going to click on the second one here, field of view and canopy fraction calculators. We just open this up here, and it's going to say viewing angle and viewing height. So let's just take for an example, let's say we wanted to do a 10 meter by 10 meter plot, and we want to measure the crop canopy inside this 10 meter by 10 meter plot. 
So we want to maximize our field of view to get as much of that in there as we can. So let's start with the SI-111, which is equivalent to that 22 degree field of view. And let's just say that our viewing angle is 65 and our viewing height is 1.5 meters above the canopy. So if we calculate, it gives over here and says our field of view is seeing 122.8 meters squared. Well, which is good information. It tells us the total surface area it's seeing, but we don't really know how that's allocated. And so to get those details, we need to look at the Excel sheet. And so that's right here, this link here, Excel sheet program to calculate target area. So download that and then open it up. So I've, just, uh, I've done that already. So here's that Excel sheet, what it looks like. And I've pre-entered in these values. So I've chosen the SI-111, which is equivalent to the 22 degree field of view. 65 degrees is our angle from the angle from the surface and then 1.5 meters above the crop. And that gives us that same 122.82. If we scroll down, then we'll see those details. So first off, again, we're trying to look at a 10 meter by 10 meter plot is our example. So we want to know how, what our length is from A to D, what our field of view is seeing. So if we come down here, we see right here it says 27.2. So that's way too long. We need to cut that down to 10. So let's come back up and let's adjust the numbers. And let's adjust this to 63 and be one meter above the crop. So we've significantly lowered this um, from 122 to 24.2, but let's see how that allocates. So our A to D is right here, 10.56. So that's pretty close. So that's pretty close to our 10 meters. And then our C to F or B would be our widest part. And we come down here and it's 1.46. So we need to double that. So we have the full width and that would be three meters. So, if, so essentially we're at three meters wide and just over 10 meters long. If we were to use the SI-111 in that application. But let's look at what it would look like with the horizontal. So if we come over here and do the SI-1H1, and let's go back to our original numbers of doing 65 and 1.5. So that's 65 degrees with our height being 1.5 meters above the crop canopy. And then if we come down here, we can get our details. So we want to know first, what is our length that we're looking at? And so we need to know G2 to G1, and that's equal to V right here. And it says it's 5.14. So it's less than our 10 meters. So that's good. We could possibly maximize that some more, but that's, that's less. And then let's figure out our widest part, our G2 to F times two is equivalent right here to 8.05. So that's not maximized either. That's less than our 10 meters. So we can come back up here and adjust them. And let's actually just adjust it to two meters above the crop, leaving the angle the same. So we've almost doubled our surface area from 27 to 48 meters squared. And then we'll come down here and look at V. It is now 6.85 meters long. So we're closer, we're, we're still within that 10 meters. But then our width, which is G2 to F, is here, 10.73. So we're just over that 10 meters, but we're pretty close. We could obviously dial that in to maximize it. So you can see in this example of our 10 meter by 10 meter square plot, the horizontal uh, does, a, does a lot better covering more surface area and maximizing that field of view. Now, as you can see in these examples, we were doing pretty specific angles. So in order to get those angles, Highly recommend using some sort of angle locator, angle finder, so you can get that right on 62 degrees or 65 degrees. Uh, we resell these, but you can of course buy your own or find your own anywhere, uh, just so you can get those angles exactly where you want them. So that concludes our video today on the infrared radiometer, choosing the right one for you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and we'll get right back to you on those. And then if you'd like to also just click right here and you can subscribe to all of our Apogee Instruments videos. Thank you.